God, we believe that this morning. And I believe that today is the day of salvation. I believe that dry bones will become alive. I believe that dead hearts will beat again. Not because we sang these songs, not because I'm going to preach a message, because the Holy Spirit is here. And the Holy Spirit can, has the power to change, has the power not to make you better, but to make you brand new. And so God, I declare it over these people in this place. I thank you that your spirit is here convicting, pressing us, uh, making us more aware of who you are. I pray now, I pray as we sit, that we actively sit, that we actively listen, that the enemy has no place in our minds in this room o o over technology online. I pray that the words that you have given me will come out, God. I pray that as I read and as I speak, they are not my words, but yours. I pray the spirit is so thick in this place and we can say it is good to be in the house of the Lord today. You are in control. I pray for surrender today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, hold on. The lights are about to come on. And I want you to high five. Listen, this is specific. I want you to high five 12 people. 12. All right, go get them now. Go. 12. Go. Come on, online, I want you to say hello to like five people. If you see their names, go ahead online, mention them by name. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Luis. Good morning, Malcolm. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, Damien. Come on, come on. Get your 12. Get your 12. How we doing, church? How we doing, church? Okay, good. Anybody not get 12 high fives? Raise your hand right now. We're going to get you 12 real quick. Look around if anybody's out there. All right. You guys turn in uh, Luke chapter 18. If you don't have a Bible, we have one for you on your way out. Make sure you stop by the Connect counter. We will be glad to give you a Bible, some resources to help you in your faith walk. Because we're ending 2022, and a lot of people want 2023 to be better than 2022. And I just tell you that without God's word, without the Holy Spirit, without his direction and his leading, your 2023 is going to look a lot like 2022. So... I want to say good morning to all of those on our online family who couldn't join us this morning. I understand. Uh, I almost don't want to say it, but I will. I understand that many um, sports fans were disappointed this past weekend. Not me. Not me. Not me. Not me. Okay. And yep. Okay. And that is not a devil sign, just so you know. Um, but that's just all I want to say. And that's all. Okay. So I understand if you're not here, you need some time to grieve, and it's okay. You got a whole year, all right? And um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Basketball's here, so you, I know it's coming, all right? So um, we got a lot happening here at the church. It's really great to see what God is doing. He's packing the house. That's kind of cool on a rainy day. Look around. That's pretty cool, right? Online, we got people tuning in from different... Different states, maybe possibly countries. I don't know. It's just really neat. Um, we've got a lot of events happening in December. We got like students every Sunday night have a different theme. So like tonight, uh, sixth through twelfth graders, pajama night. Wear your Christmas appropriate pajamas. See how I slid that in there, right? Come on, parents, help us out there. Um, but yeah, wear your jamas, and hopefully, Phelan will be in here. Pastor Rod will be in his jamas, decked out. We will get some good video that we can embarrass them on social media with later. Our kids' ministry is going strong this morning. Uh, we got many volunteers over there. I got over there to huddle with them, and, and there's like 15 of them huddling around, getting excited. So that's really cool. And um, they have pajamas and pancakes coming up on December 11th. So listen, church, adults, you have permission to wear your jamas, appropriate Christmas jamas, on December 11th, okay? Seriously. 
Yeah, y'all are wondering if I'm going to preach in them. We'll see. I got a onesie. Mandy was rocking hers last night. Um, more embarrassing pictures to come. All leading up to December 11th, which is Beyond Sunday. And, and so we're in this series called Beyond. We got baptisms happening. Look, a lot of you are thinking about baptism. You feel the Holy Spirit pressing on you. You've never been baptized after you chose to follow Jesus. Maybe you were baptized before and you don't even remember it. But now that you're a follower of Jesus, you've never been baptized. I would encourage you, sign up. Sign up. Even if you just feel this pressure and you're unsure. Because when you sign up, we're going to physically talk to you. And don't be scared of that. It's going to be Pastor Rod and his onesie. So we're going to be good and everything will be okay. But you guys anticipate December 11th. It's, it's a beautiful day. And then uh, the 18th, we've got Christmas at Vision. Two services, 9 or 11. Members, we want you to come to one and soak and then serve at the other. Non-members, we want you to come to one and and. Stay for the other or, or bring a friend or, or do what you want to do. But we definitely want you to be here. Um, and Christmas, we know that most people are in this community go to church somewhere at Christmas. And studies show that most people, when asked, you want to go? Most people say yes. So like you're one share or one invite away from somebody meeting Jesus. That's a big deal. So, we also have a Christmas Eve service, 3 o'clock, candlelight service, small, intimate, beautiful candles. And then the 25th, the 25th is church at home, Christmas at home. We'll provide an online worship experience, but we realize how busy, how crazy, and, and, and it's not that we don't maximize Jesus and exalt Jesus and, and declare this is his day, but we can do that at home with our families as much as we can do that here. It's different, I understand that. But we always take off the last Sunday of the year to kind of rest, recharge, refocus. And so, you be in place, get ready. All right, so I got a confession to make early in the message. So you know I'm kind of out there as a pastor and you don't ever know what I'm gonna say and, and that's good and bad sometimes, but I'm not... And most people know this about me. If you're new here, you don't. I'm not a manly man. I told Dale, this is about as country as I get. He's like, those aren't even real boots. And I'm like, yeah, I know. So I still wear the trendy boots. But, you, you know, this is about it. I got flannel. Today was flannel Sunday. If you missed it, sorry. Um, you can wear it next Sunday. So, um, but there is something. I don't know if this is manly or not. But I, I think, I, I, I don't know. I just confess. Listen. Listen, you hear that? What's that noise? It's what? Oh, you got it? Thanks, buddy. Thanks. I thought it was my shoe squeaking every time. I was about to take off my shoes because I mentioned the boots. So, I like to watch WWE wrestling. Any wrestling fans out here? Oh, gosh, nobody? Yes, thank you, ladies. <laughs> um, any, any, yes, Kenny, I see, I see you back there. Is that Gail? Yes, it's the ladies, me and Kenny. All right, well, I grew up on, anybody grow up on wrestling? Oh, oh that's better. Okay, the WWF, right, with, with Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, and Ultimate Warriors. Shout out some wrestlers. Undertaker, Jake the Snake, Ric Flair. Woo! Yeah, right? Okay, so I, I love wrestling. It's weird. It's just, I know it, if you don't know, it's fake to a degree, but there is, man, there's some level. Those are men throwing each other from cages and putting them in, I mean, it still is taxing on the body. And so I watched wrestling. In fact, last night, I confessed that I watched a pay-per-view event that I didn't pay for, um, but I did watch it and I didn't steal it, by the way. Um, but, but one of, I like the finishing moves. You know what I'm talking about? Finishing moves like the rock. He has the rock bottom. The Hulk. He, Hulk. He had a boot. What else we have? The stunner. Oh, that's a good one. In fact, KO wrestled last night. He had the stunner. Um, so, so, but um, people like Ronda Rousey. She's a she's a wrestler. She actually was a UFC fighter. And UFC is probably a better illustration. I would have sound manlier if I followed that. But um, how do you win? 
in a, in a UFC or a, a Ronda Rousey when she's wrestling. She wins by making you tap out. Tap out. A submission hold. Right? Ric Flair, I was mentioned. Didn't he do the figure four? And you would tap out. Tap. Tap. And when you tap out, ultimately what you're doing is saying, I surrender. I quit. I give up. I submit. I want to make a statement to you this morning. If you are a follower of Jesus, okay, so some of you, this doesn't apply. But if you are a follower of Jesus, then you must tap out. You must surrender. We're going to be in Luke chapter 18. I want to set it up this way. This is the parable. Actually, actually, it, it, actually in, in Luke 18, let me go back. In Luke 18, there is a rich, young ruler. This is not a parable. In fact, the ruler comes up to Jesus. Now, you've got to understand something about the rich, young ruler. He's young. There's, there's references in the Gospels of Mark and Matthew but that tell us he was young and he was rich and he was a ruler. Young, rich, and ruler. Now, this means that he was very prominent in the Jewish society, which means that he was ruling in the synagogue, which means he knew scripture. He didn't just come to church and listen he actually taught this stuff. He actually believed the scriptures. People looked at him like you look at maybe a pastor or a, a life group leader or a church leader. This guy was a religious, like, saint in people's eyes. You understand? He's rich. He's got a lot of wealth because back in the day, if you're wealthy, that means God blesses you. Be careful, by the way, if you go to churches and, and, and you hear the prosperity gospel saying you need to give. When you give, God will give you more. And what they're indicating is that God will give you more money. That is not always the case. That does happen. I believe in that. But, but you need to hear sometimes you give and God does not give you money back. That's truth. That's truth. So you got to be careful. But this is a rich young ruler and he is like almost idolized by people he keeps the law he keeps the things of god and he comes up to jesus so picture this dude comes up to jesus and he says this in verse 18 good teacher what must i do to inherit eternal life why is this dude asking that if anybody's going to have eternal life, it's the religious, rich, young ruler. Why is he coming to Jesus and asking him how to have eternal life? Wouldn't he know how to have eternal life? He says, good teacher. Now, Jesus responds this way in verse 19. Why do you call me good? No one is good Except God alone. What does he mean? During this time, you don't call people good. Not even the best of the best. Not even rich young rulers are good. Why? Because good equaled God. No one was good except for God. So by this man coming to Jesus and calling him a good teacher, he either believed that this was God, that this was God's messenger, or that this rabbi had access to God that he didn't. You understand? So this young rich ruler wants to know, how do I have eternal life? I'm coming to the one who can tell me. He believes he's got the answer. Verse 20, Jesus says this. Okay, you want eternity? We're all searching, longing for eternity, by the way. You all want to know when you die that you're going to be with God. Even if you don't believe, there's something deep inside of your heart that is longing to know if you're going to be okay. If you're going to be with God. So Jesus answers the question. You ready for the answer? Verse 20. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false, wit 
witness, honor your father and your mother. And this is where the rich young ruler should say, oh. Right? Especially when Jesus says, if you look at anyone with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. If you've thought that you've hated somebody in a moment, it's the same thing as killing them. Jesus says, love those who hurt you. So the rich young ruler, he gets the answer. Keep the commandments. Obey the laws of God. So he should be like, oh no. I'm sorry, I haven't done that. His response, he says in verse 21, all these I have kept from my youth. I mean, he's the rich young ruler, of course. He's a pastor. He is a leader. Surely he's kept them. He's going to heaven. He's going to be okay with God. Here's the problem. The rich young ruler was relying on himself. Here's the first thing. If you're going to follow, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus today, here's the first thing that you have to surrender. To follow Jesus, you have to surrender your trust. I need you to hear me today. This is like the most important message you're going to hear all week. You need to surrender what you trust in. The religious guy, he trusted in himself. He was, he was like a ninja with religion. He had, he had scripture memorized. Like he was a walking Bible. He kept all the commands. He, he, like today's perspective, he never misses church. He gives faithfully. He serves twice a month, sometimes three times a month. And if he's in the kids' ministry, who knows how often he serves? And he asked Jesus, what do I have to do to be okay? How, how do I? And Jesus says, what you got to do is realize that you can never do enough. See, one of the problems with today's Christians, I want to talk to followers of Jesus. One of the problems with today's Christians is that we put so much emphasis on performing, on doing, on serving, on... We put all of this emphasis, and what's happened is this. We've begun trusting in what we do to make us right. You hearing me? It's self-righteousness. We work really hard to be right with God, don't we? We get up early or late. We pray before meals. We're here. We're serving. We're in a life group. We're giving. Like we're doing the stuff. We memorize scripture. We read. We're posting. But if we strip it back. We, I, I think many people do these things. To be seen. To be heard. We come to church. Listen. We come to church. To be filled. When we should be coming. To sacrifice. For others. We don't like a song. Or who's singing. Or what the preacher's wearing. Or what he said. And we, we join groups. We join church. We do all of these things. And we feel like. Let's be honest. Got to be careful. Because sometimes we feel like the church can't really do that well without us. Like we start thinking those who are very generous. Well, if I wasn't here, if I didn't give that this week. Well, if I didn't serve every other week, this place would be. And we begin to be trusting 
if I wasn't on this this body, if I wasn't a deacon, if I wasn't on the board, if I wasn't on staff, if I, this church is so much better because I'm better look out. Because we're trusting in ourself. Listen, this is a huge problem with people on church staff, especially pastors. 50%, check this out, 50% of pastors have seriously thought about walking out of ministry. That's half. Half of them. Half of pastors have said, nope, I can't do it. The pressure is too much. I can't perform. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't keep up. We're growing. We're doing all these things. I don't know how to lead it. And 50%, half. That means either this church or that church. One of us has thought about leaving ministry. Because of the pressure to perform. I believe many Christians do this. Many Christians do this. And so we work really hard doing, serving, and going, and being, and leading, and praying, and being involved. I got to come to this. I got to do this. We got to do this. And you know what happens before we know it? We've lost time with God. We're so busy doing ministry that we forgot to be growing with God. Ministry for God does not replace intimacy with God. Do you want to know the remedy for this? Because I'm speaking to a lot of people in this church and listening to this message that believe their performance, what they do, what they give, what, how they're committed, that is, is making them self-righteous. Do you want to know the remedy for this? You're going to hate it. You're going to hate it. If you are a doer, and the doing is what fulfills you. Not the G, but the doing. Got to do, got to do, got to do. Got to be involved. Got to have my hand in it. Got to have some say. Got to gotta at least give my opinion. Do you know what the remedy is? Here it is. Every day. Every day. Sit in solitude and silence. And know that God is God. Now listen to me. I want to challenge you, church. This is the vision challenge for this week. Every day this week, sit in silence with God. You go, oh, I do that. I have my quiet time. Mm -mm. It's so easy for you to check off boxes, to post it on the U version so people see it. It's, it's, become, a, it's become a tradition. It's become, and I'm not saying it's not meaningful. I'm just saying you have a lot of you in your quiet time. So here's what you need to do. Sit. Sit. No phone. No phone. No device. No computer. No radio. No smartwatch. Nothing. Sit where there is nothing happening. And believe. What Psalm says, that God is God. And your mind will start racing and you get it under control through the power of the Holy Spirit. And you just sit and don't do. And you know what you're thinking? I don't have time. Do it every day this week, starting tomorrow. That's the challenge, church. How long? Longer than you want to. And then do it 30 more minutes. You can't even imagine it, can you? Because you're trusting in you. Tomorrow, I'm going to post something. I'm going to post something. Say, sit alone. Do something. Marcy's already thinking. I know. You cannot perform your way into God's kingdom. You aren't that good. And neither am I. Now here's the flip side of that. This trusting in yourself. Here's the flip side. Maybe that's not you. Some of you are trying so hard to make up for your past.
you see your sin and what you did or what somebody did to you or that addiction you have. Maybe it's a present sin, but you see it as so big that unless you start doing some things, there's no way that you could be right with God. You with me? So we're going to do something really quick. I need 100% participation. Okay? I need to know who I'm talking to. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to bow your heads, and I need you to close your eyes. Don't peek. Let's just do this. Let's have the Holy Spirit take over. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Don't look around, including the people who normally look around. Don't do it today. They know who I'm talking to. Between 1 and 10, 1 and 10, how certain are you that when you die, if you walk out this door and you get hit by a car and you immediately stop and your life ends and you die, between 1 and 10, how certain are you that you will be in heaven with God? Think about that. Think about that. Here's what I want to tell you. 1 is like I won't be. Two to four, not sure. Five to seven, maybe. Eight to nine, pretty sure. I'm pretty confident that I'll be there. I'm, I'm just kind of worried about one thing, but like, I, I got this. But I'm pretty sure. I prayed, I got baptized, I think that I'm okay. I know I'm not living like I'm, but I'm pretty sure. Eight or nine. And then ten is like, yeah, I got this. I'm in heaven, no matter what. Come on. Come at me. All right, so heads bowed, eyes closed. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand when I call your number, okay? How many five to sevens do we have? Don't look around. Just lift your hand. All right, I see you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Five to seven. Put them down. That was maybe. That was maybe. Okay, good, good. All right, keep your eyes closed. How many um, ones that are saying, I'm not going to be there? There's no doubt. I'm not going to be there. Raise your hand. It's okay. It's okay. Safe place. Safe place. Okay, good. How many are saying, uh, I'm not sure, like there's a chance, but I'm just not sure. I need, I, need, I need to be sure, but I'm just not. Raise your hand if that's you. I see you. I see Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not sure. Okay, good. How many are saying, hey, I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty sure. I'm an eight or nine. I'm probably going to be there. Um, I, I'm pretty sure. Eights or nine. Raise your hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then uh, put your hands down. And, and a 10. How many are like, there's no doubt I'm going. All right. I got you. I got you. Okay, good. Put your hands down. All right, lift your head, lift your eyes, lift your heads. Okay, so we got a lot of people represented in this room. Just know that you're not alone. If you're a one, you're not alone. If you're a five, you're not alone. If you're a ten, you're not alone. But everybody's represented. Now, if you stood before God right now, here's the other question that we used to ask in the 90s. If you stood before God, and he said, why should I let you in my heaven? What would you say? Do you want to know what most people would say? Most people. If you're a, if you're a five to, to nine, maybe a four, you know what you would say? Well, I believe in you. Or, or I've, I've done good. I've tried hard. And I've loved you. God, I've done good. I've tried hard. And I love you. That's what most people would say. Newsflash, listen to me, I'm saying this out of love, nobody, not one person gets to heaven because they did good, they tried hard, and they loved God. Not one. Even the demons believe in God and tremble. The only way for you to be right with God, listen to me today, this is life changing, this is going to change your Christmas, this is going to change your 2022. The only way for you to be a 10 on the scale is for you to stop trusting in you and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. The payment for your sin. You are not too dirty for the Son of God. The only way God's letting you into heaven is Jesus. If the sentence starts with I, you're trusting in yourself. Well, I tried to be involved in church. I served as a life group leader. I was on staff at Vision. I pastored Vision. I, I knew Bible. I know. I believe none of that. Jesus Christ, his finished work, the cross, the empty tomb, you surrendering and tapping out. That's the only way that you can be a 10. And if you aren't a 10, you raise your hand and you weren't a 10. And some of you are like,
man, I just didn't want to be arrogant. I didn't want to be prideful. Any number other than a 10 is arrogant. Because that means there is something that Christ died for that you don't think. He's satisfied. God's payment is way bigger than your sin. If you could get to God by what you do, by the way you stop using or the stop doing or start doing, if that gets you to heaven, then God wasted the death of Jesus. You can't miss heaven. Hear me, please. You can't miss heaven because of any sin you've committed. Listen to me. We got people in here who have used and abused for years. I'm here to tell you today, that's not going to keep you out of heaven. It's not going to keep you out of heaven. We got people who come to church all the time, grew up in the church, can quote scripture, have served, have led, and that's not going to get you into heaven. You can't miss heaven because of any sin you've committed, and you can't earn heaven because of any righteous thing you've done. It is all through the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. You, what do you need? You, what, do you, what do you need to do to be okay, to have eternal life? Jesus says you need to be needy. And we don't like to be needy. We like to be in control. And Jesus says you better tap out. Stop trusting in yourself. Stop trusting in your works. Stop trying to impress. Tap out. Some of, some of us sit in church our whole life. And we think we're saved. And we can't read scripture. Because it's too hard. And we don't understand it. And we don't feel God. But we think we're saved. I'm telling you that's not our God. Our God is not the author of confusion. When you are saved, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And He gives you eyes that you didn't have before. He doesn't just make you better. He makes you new. Tap out. Give up. You're not weak if you do that. You're strong. Surrender your trust. i got to keep going. Verse 22. Okay, so remember Jesus talking to the rich young ruler. He's like, I, could, I kept all the commands. Jesus could have called him on his bluff. Jesus could have been like, hey, boys, watch this. I'm about to nail this guy. Really? What about last Tuesday? When, you know, like he could, have, he could have called that guy out. But Jesus, actually in Mark chapter 10, verse 21, it actually says Jesus lovingly, loving him. So Jesus actually heard this guy lie. And Jesus loved him. I mean, just because there's a sinner in your life that's doing wrong, you better not stop loving them. I need to stay on track. Okay. Jesus heard this guy say that he's kept the commands. And he said to him, one thing you still lack. Sell all that you have and distribute to the, pure, to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Jesus looks at this man with love in his heart and love in his eyes and says... Hey man, you got to trust me. Go sell everything. Give up your life and just follow me. Remember, this guy wants to know. He believes that Jesus is going to give him the answer. And Jesus gives him the answer. Will you trust me? Here's the second thing you got to surrender. To follow Jesus, you've got to surrender your earthly ambitions. You have to disconnect yourself from everything that means more to you than God. I'm not so much interested, and neither is God, at what your lips say. It's more about your life. He tells this guy, sell your stuff. Give it to people you don't know. The poor, the needy, the helpless. You got plenty. Give it away. You want eternal life? Come on. Then follow me. Now this man was rich. Rich wasn't just about him, it was about his family. His wife, his kids, his grandbabies, aunts, uncles, cousins. Like, wealth was family-wide, and it was a lot. This guy had a lot. 
And if he gave everything up, what would his family do? Oh, you want me to make it personal? Like Crystal. Like if Brian looked at you and said, hey, we out. God told me to do this. I'm selling everything. The horses, Hattie, Paris, the horses, they're gone. They're gone. Like we're moving. You're not going to teach anymore? We're going to follow what God says. Now, is that an easy decision for y'all to make? Crystal, Addie, Paris, maybe, maybe more so for Crystal. She trusts Brian, but that's a big trust level, especially if he's doing something that's not normal. That's not an everyday pattern. The girls won't want you to sell the horses. I can tell you that. They might, they might lie and say, yeah, but they didn't want you to sell those horses. We're going to sell the house, the cars. We're not going to drive for a little bit. You okay with that? We, we get rid of our phones. We're no social media. Oh, we out. Like, if this man does what Jesus says, his family disowns him. You're not going to interrupt my life. That's what Jesus talked about a few chapters before in Luke 14, where he says, you've got to hate your mom and your dad and your brothers and sisters. Your, you know, that's what he was saying. And then a little later in, in chapter 14, he says, whoever doesn't carry his own cross, whoever doesn't come after me can't be my disciple. And then he goes on in verse 33 and he says, sell your possessions. You can't be my disciple if the stuff is more important than the Savior. So if you're holding on today to dreams, to ambitions, to the bigger house, to the more shopping, the more stuff, that I got to have this. And you're holding on to all these desires and dreams that are not godly. Your hands are clenched. Your focus is on that. Then you have no room to carry your cross. Because you're trusting in your wealth. You're trusting in your business. You're trusting in, you know, you're filling the blanks. Your stuff. More stuff does not bring you contentment. It doesn't bring you happiness. You don't have to have any more. Now, I want to be careful because Jesus is not saying, just be poor. Everybody sell it today. Leave here. Sell everything and just give it away. He may be saying that to you, but that's not his point here. See, the man in verse 23, the rich young ruler, he heard what Jesus said and he became very sad for he was extremely rich. Matthew and Mark's account say that he walked away. He left because he was sad. The man said he wanted eternal life, but he proved with his actions that he wanted his stuff more. He was not willing to. To let go of his stuff. To hold on to a savior. How about you? I mean, I've had to walk with this. And there's things in my life. There's dreams in my life. Y'all, the Lord is working on my heart in a, in a weird and incredible way. But there's some things that I got to let go of. Like, I'm just... I got to let go of some things. I got to leave them behind. And I'm saved. I'm a pastor. But like I'm not getting this all right. What are you not willing to give up. To follow Jesus. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. So you, you got to. Tap out. Some of you are dating people. Who don't love God. I call it like I see it. Don't be unequally yoked. Well, I'm, I'm going to be a light to them. Yeah, you, you can be a light to them without dating them, without doing married things with them. Tap out. Yeah, but I love God. I trust him. But like, I don't know. I just don't trust the church. I, I don't want to give, man. Come on. I, I get it. I get it. People suck. People lie, people cheat, 
People steal. I get it, man. But, but every time, every time I get paid, every single time, I immediately, first fruits, go back to God. They're His. They're not mine. And we don't live on 100%. Can't do that. Why? Because God doesn't want me to do that. I don't prove that I love God when I do that. I prove that I love my mortgage and my bills and my stuff. And then maybe my leftovers I can give him my sloppy seconds. Come on, man. Tap out. How about your time? Some of you freaked out when I said sit in silence and then go 30 more minutes. Tap out. I can't join a group. I'm too busy. Your priorities are out of whack. Tap out. Tap out. I'm always at work. My family's neglected. But I'm trying my best to earn all this stuff to give them the kingdom they want. Yeah. Tap out. Parents, including us, we give our children way too much. They rule our lives. Give them to God. Jesus isn't saying you can't be rich. It wasn't that this man had money and wealth. It was that money and wealth had him. It's a difference. And we got rich people in this church. The most generous people I know. We talk about that later on. My point is, what are you holding on to so tight that you cannot let go of to hold on to Jesus? Tap out. Jesus, in verse 24, seeing that he had become sad, said, How difficult is it for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? Jesus says, It is hard for those who have wealth to enter God's kingdom. For it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. What's Jesus saying? If you're rich, you can't go to heaven? No. He's speaking in a hyperbole here. He's saying it's impossible. Listen. It's impossible to have eternal life, to be right with God, to get to heaven. It is impossible to do it in your own power. You can't change your heart. You can't fix you. You, you, you. He's not saying he doesn't want you to have riches. He's completely opposite. He's just saying it's hard because when riches have you, you get blinded. And you think now you can earn your way. Not even money can get you right with God. In other words, it is impossible for you in your own logic, in your own mind, in your own performance in your own wealth to be okay with God. And that's what so many people do. I believe there's people here today that are doing it. You're trying to fix yourself. And that's why you came to church. That's why you'll come to the altar. That's why you'll stop and start doing things. Because you're trying to fix yourself. And Jesus right here, I'm here to tell you, listen, Jesus is saying you can't do it. It's impossible. I'd rather take a big old camel and a little teeny needle and put it through there. It's easier to do that than you to try to change your own heart. So everybody's now wondering what the disciples were wondering, what the people were wondering, saying, verse 26, who can be saved? If I can't do it, if I can't walk an aisle and pray a prayer and do it, and if that's not what it is, and I can't buy my way, like, I, I can't know enough. Like, then how can I be saved? Jesus says, verse 27, what's impossible with man is possible with God. It's a God thing that changes your heart. It's not a man thing. Now listen, verse 28, Peter says, hey, Jesus, I love Peter. He's my guy. He says, hey, hey, Jesus, we left our homes and we're following you. We did what we said. We left everything. Because see, this is what you hear. You have to give up to follow. Right? you got to give up stuff to follow Jesus. Watch what Jesus says in verse 29. Truly I say to you, there's no one who has left a house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God 
who will not receive many times more in this time and in the age to come eternal life. Don't you see this? Peter says, we've done it all. We've left you. We're doing what you've asked. We've left our homes. We left our wives and children, our jobs. We've left our community all to follow you, Jesus. And Jesus looks at him and says, you ain't left nothing. Don't you see that I'm multiplying as you follow? Don't you see that I've taken what you've left and I'm multiplying it now? Your goals, your ambitions, your dreams, and you haven't even seen the best yet. It's coming. Eternity's coming. You just keep following me and I will give you more. This isn't a Jesus takes something to follow him. This is a give and follow and he multiplies, man. That's what he says here. You got to stop believe, <laughs> excuse me, believing that life is all that there is. Look, you're going to be older. Some of you are older. And you ain't doing what you used to do. And you feel like you don't have any purpose anymore. Your life is not meant for here. You're living for eternity. And I know it's hard. We develop relationships. We get married. We have kids. We see death. We see separation. We see riches. And we lose riches. And our focus is all wrong. You were saved not just for now. You were saved for eternity. And Christ is preparing a place for you. Riches. Blessings. And he's even going to do that now in this place. But you've got to surrender. Tap out your earthly ambitions. And lastly, to follow Jesus. You've got to fix your focus on eternity. And not earthly. That's what he says. Come on guys, listen. The rich young ruler, he missed out bro. He missed out. He's talking with Jesus. He's talking with the son of God. Jesus gives him the answer how to be okay. Right now, Jesus has given you the answer how to be okay. Surrender. Tap out. We don't even know this guy's name. He could have been the 13th disciple. He could have done miracles and wonders. He's right there with all the answers. And you're right here with all the answers. And he's telling all of us, tap out. Surrender. Stop thinking about just now. Invest in what is to come. Invest in people. Invest in a community. Invest in God's church. That's what we're doing right now. And this guy that's standing with Jesus as you're sitting here with the Holy Spirit, with God's word. This rich young ruler looks at him and says, I don't know, bro. I don't think I can do what you're asking me to do. And he walks away. Sad. My, my fear is that many of you will do the same thing. God's telling you right now, you already know what you haven't surrendered. You won't do it. You'll walk away. And life happens. And you'll be sad. Rich, young, Ruler, isn't that funny that that's what culture is selling today? That's the three adjectives that describe us, the world. Like, who doesn't want to be rich? We're working so hard to get more. Go shopping to have more. We want more, more, more. And we hide it behind, yeah, if I have more, then I'll be able to leave it for my kids and all that. So I'm going to work really hard to build my kingdom. Again, nothing wrong with wealth. But is that your desire? Are you dreaming of the day you're rich? Are you dreaming of the day you retire? Are you, what, what about... What about the 71% around us? We don't 
know Jesus. What are you doing? Can you imagine what God could do with you, through you? I'm not even talking money. I'm just talking about you. Get out. Talk to people. Share. Invite. Some of you are desiring to be young. You get all these facelifts and Botox and, and then we, 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 we dress younger. Like I'm, I'm guilty. We want to be young. We don't want to get old. Because old is bad. So we're going to do whatever it takes to stay young. We're going to hang with young people. We're going to do young, young things. And then most of us, we will not surrender our control. It's a good sermon, but jeez, I can't do it. Tap out, bro. Tap out. Tap out. Surrender. So this is what beyond is all about December 11th. Because the majority of people, it may not be you, but the majority of people, there's two things they won't surrender. They just won't. Family, finances. Just won't. And on December 11th, this church sacrificially gives above and beyond our normal, weekly, monthly, annual giving. And we use that money. God uses that money to expand the kingdom, to build not our kingdom, not a bigger church. And, and look, I'm not against buildings. I'm not against more ministries and more people. I want all of that stuff. I believe God think, wants that. I believe healthy things grow. And that's what we're doing. And I'm just telling you that when we, when we surrender and go all in, above and beyond, God uses that to grow and advance the kingdom. So here's what we're doing today. I need you to think right now. And I need you to ask the Holy Spirit if you're a follower of Jesus. Listen to me. This is just for followers of Jesus. If you're not a follower of Jesus, if you're not a 10, a 10. And I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to my tens. Listen to me. Is there anything in your life? Anything in your life that you need to surrender? Some of you need to surrender hurts that you're holding on to. Grudges. You need to surrender it today. Some of you are, you love Jesus. You love the church. But you're not focused on eternity. You're not even really focused on the people around you. It's your world tap out today you've got to physically tap out and surrender repent say God I love you you know that but I have not been focusing right some of you have control problems tap out tap out some of you are trying to fix a situation that you know you'll never fix tap out give it to God let go of the stuff some of, you, some of you love God, but you sure do love shopping. Or you sure do love sports. Or you sure do love saving. And just because you save money doesn't mean you trust God. Tap out. Tap out. Now let me talk to everybody else. Hear me. Some of you are playing the Christian game. I did it for years. You got one foot in the church. And oh, I was glad we sang that song. And yeah, that was a good message. And I'm checking this off my box. I'm in a group. I'm serving. I'm, get, I'm doing all. You, you, you got a foot in the church. But you also got another foot. And it's in the world. And you like a little sin. You like it. You're dating and you're going too far and you enjoy it. What do you do when you, when you like the church, but I also like my sin. You know what you're, you know what's happening? Listen to me. You know what's happening? You've got 
just enough church. You've got just enough church that you can't really enjoy the world. But you got just enough world that you can't really enjoy the church. Tap out. Surrender. Surrender. Because you know what that does? Because I played the game. Aren't you tired of playing that game? It just leaves you exhausted. Like you're fooling your spouse and your kids or your parents. And it's just tiring. It's like, gosh. Well, I feel guilty all the time, but yet I'm going to do it anyway. Aren't you just tired? Tap out. Tap out. And then there's one more type of person here and you have been trusting in you to be right with God you want to make sure that you're doing all the Christian things you are the rich young ruler you may not be rich may not be young but you're playing that game you, you are trying so hard to stop doing or start doing and trusting in yourself and when you die you don't know what you're saying you might say I've tried hard did good loved you the saddest words he'll look at you and say you gotta leave I don't even know you tap out here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna get a few prayer warriors right here come on Kelly Mandy get up here Tina where are my men prayer warriors? Jose here today? Uh, no, yeah, come on, Jose. Pastor Rod, you get up here. Anybody who likes to pray, spread out on this side. Spread on this side. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Good. Now look, these people. Yeah, there we go. Good. These people, these people want to pray. Go on this side. Yep. These people want to pray. Now look, these people are here on this side for people who are not sure that they're saved. You either know you're not. Or you, you're not sure. And you need to shore it up right now. I'm talking right now. Today is your day. That is good news. That is not scary. That is not sad. That is not embarrassing. Your eternity is on the line. So today, you make it right. And these people are here. And they just want to hug you. And they're going to take you. Not into a cra crazy room or anything like that. They may talk to you right here. They may slip right out to the back. But they just want to pray with you. They may sit down right here and talk with you about your salvation. Your eternity is at, stake, is at stake. Don't walk away sad. So if you need Christ, if you need salvation today, this is your side. Everybody else is a gut check. What do I need to lay down at the cross and leave it? You surrender today. Whatever it is. Your stuff, your ambitions, your well, your own, your, your own blindness, your, your, your grudge that you're holding. Surrender. Your church hurt. Surrender. Your lack of trust. Surrender. Everybody understand two sides? God loves, loves it when his people move. You know that, right? Just read the Bible. So let's stand. We're going to sing a song. You're not going to sing it. You're going to let the Holy Spirit speak to you and you're going to move. Now listen to me. This song is called Rescue by Lauren Daigle. Leela and Sonda are leading us. Lauren Daigle said, I remember getting this vision about a girl who was caught in a really desperate situation. She was running to all these vices, all these different things to find an element of hope. She just needed a way out. She just wanted someone to rescue her. From the way she feels, the anxiety, the depression, the guilt. She says, and in comes Jesus. And instead of going to her and judging her and calling her out. And, and talking about the things that she did and the, the bad stuff. He sat with her. He didn't try to fix her. He just was with her. So today, surrender. Jesus is ready to rescue you. Father, do your work now. I love you.
Thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's go. Surrender. Father, we are going to continue to pray. The Holy Spirit is moving and people are coming. So you feel led to sit, soak, or move. I understand if you have to leave, but I'd encourage you. And the Holy Spirit's moving. Go ahead and ask, what is he, what's he doing in your heart and life? I mean, this is the most important. God just broke me over here with my wife. Literally broke me uncontrollably because there's stuff I got to surrender. And I just wasn't ready. And like, I don't know. I don't know how. That's what I, I said. God, I don't know how because I've tried. But I got to trust him. I got to do things differently. I got to lean on him. in the light and ask Pastor Jose to come over here. Let's get over just a little bit. And Diana to come up here. Come on over. And uh, he wanted to say something. So you continue to work. You continue to listen. You continue to lean on the Holy Spirit. I just feel like I want to share something with you guys this morning. You know, we're talking about decisions in some point in your life you actually had to decide whether to follow Christ alone or to somehow be caught up in the world we're talking about riches and perhaps uh, difficult times poor in some point in your life you actually had to decide who to follow. Not only to be one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God, as Pastor Chris said this morning. I wanted to remind you something from the scripture in uh, Hebrews 12. By faith, Moses, when he, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated alone with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of, of sin. You know, the truth is that the pleasures of sin, it feels good. Nobody can deny that. But you have to decide whether you are ready to leave that and truly your faith in Christ and follow Christ and make him to be what he wants to be in your life. Is Christmas approaching? May that Christmas be the sweetest Christmas in your life, this, this coming Christmas. Give yourself to the Lord. Decide. Make a decision. You have to decide. You will not change overnight, but you will continue focusing on following Christ for who he is to you, for what he has done to you. It is by faith alone. But the truth is that Christ wants to be first in your life. You see, the truth is that sometimes we really struggle with that. It is the truth. We as humans, we struggle. We fail day after day. Christianity is not about one week. Christianity is not about Christmas season. It is about your life. Did you truly decide who you want to be? Is Christ worth it to you? He is to me. Jesus Christ is worth it to me about all things. I just wanted to share that this morning. I know Pastor Chris, he said we are 
church is uh, led by the Spirit, and I feel moved by the Spirit, and I wanted to share that with you in a loving way. May that be special to you, and it will be special to Christ as well. Thank you, brother. We're going to sing together a song that we heard earlier. Diana's going to lead us, and uh, just thank God for the blood. And after we're done, we're going to get out of here. You're going to eat and be merry. And you're going to tell somebody about Jesus this week. Remember, tomorrow, sit in silence. And when you don't want to do it, 30 minutes longer. God, you, you speak now. You continue to move, and we thank you for Jesus. Church, I love you. Go live this life the way God wants you to. Surrender to him. You're sent on a mission. Come back next week. Get ready. Go live out who you are in Christ. God bless you.